Hello everyone, I am Sakshi Mandwal and today in this program we are going to discuss introduction to composition. The subject expert for this program is Professor F. B. Khan from AJK MCRC Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Welcome to the course on design and graphics. Today we are going to discuss on the issue composition. How is composition relevant while doing design and graphics? The title of this module is Introduction to Composition and we aim to make you a designer with good compositional skills with the help of this course. This module engages with what is composition, how is it relevant in the field of design and graphics and how to get the perfect composition. The areas covered in the module are introduction to composition, principles of composition, methods of composition. Composition. What is composition? Composition is the placement of relative objects and elements in a work of art. It is applicable to every art form like dance, music, installation, photography, painting and so on. The correct selection, arranging, organizing and combining the visual elements within the picture area to produce a harmonious and pleasing image in all the above mentioned art forms is called composition. The term composition is basically referring to placement and means of putting together any work of art using conscious thought. Anybody who has an interest in art must be careful of composition. The balancing of an image is done with the help of composition. Various elements in the overall design usually relate to each other and the whole artwork. The process of composition is done by a photographer while clicking a photograph by looking through a viewfinder. Suppose there is a flower, sky, a kid and a butterfly in a frame. It is the scale of a photograph that can ensure a good composition. What is a good composition? A good composition is something that is not over flooded with details and has only the definite number of details in it. The degree of goodness of composition determines the degree of goodness of image. A good composition is the resonance of good balancing done in an image. Any element that is not necessary for your purpose should be removed to ensure a perfect composition. This doesn't emphasize that to make an image good details need to be left out. Aim of composition. A good composition must be pleasing to the eye. The aim of a composition must be to show your subject or object in an appealing and aesthetically pleasing way. At the same time, not every work of art is supposed to be pleasing or beautiful to the viewer. There are artists who try to express varied ideas. Composition is one way to achieve this. The purpose of the photograph determines the aim of the photograph. The emotion of a photograph is delivered through a photograph. The composition aims in expressing the idea of the artist. Visual elements in composition. The visual elements are the building blocks of composition and art. An analysis of any drawing, painting, sculpture or design shows the visual elements in composition. The role of these elements is profound to the component parts of any art to see how they combine and create the overall effect of artwork. Primary visual elements in composition are line, shape, tone, texture, color, direction, size, form. It is important to take care that the visual elements maintain a relationship to one another. They are related to each other in different ways. The beginning of life of any image is as line drawings. It is these lines that cross each other resulting in the formation of shapes and patterns. These shapes are filled with color and tone or either simply repeated for the creation of patterns. The usage of rough surfaces is ensured while creating textures. Projecting these shapes into various dimensions like 3 or 4 gives a form to these shapes. Visual elements of composition in detail. Line. Line is the visual part that enables the eye to move within the composition. It is the foundation of all drawing and is the first and most versatile element of the visual elements of art. The usage of line in an artwork can be done in many different ways. The suggestion to shape, pattern, form, structure, growth, depth, 
distance, rhythm, movement and a range of emotions are determined and can be drawn by using line. The various types of lines represent various psychological responses as well. The way one draws a line shows the different qualities represented by the artist who draws these lines. A keen looker of the lines can develop an idea with regard to the context, emotion and reflections an artist would have had while drawing a line. There are four categories of line that represents different psychological responses to drawing line. They are curved lines, horizontal lines, vertical and jagged lines. Curved lines. Curved lines suggest comfort and ease while drawing. Horizontal lines. Horizontal lines suggest distance and calm while drawing. Vertical lines. Vertical lines suggest height and strength while drawing. Jagged lines. Jagged lines suggest turmoil and anxiety while drawing. Along with psychological responses to drawing, these lines can also express different qualities as well. They are freehand lines. Freehand lines can express the personal energy and mood of the artist while drawing. Mechanical lines. Mechanical lines can express a rigid control of the artist while drawing. Continuous lines. Continuous lines can lead the eye in certain directions of the artist while drawing. Broken lines. Broken lines can express the ephemeral or the insubstantial of the artist while drawing. Thick lines. Thick lines can express strength of the artist while drawing. Thin lines. Thin lines can express delicacy of the artist while drawing. Shape. Shapes are the areas defined by edges within the piece of drawing, whether it is geometric or organic. The creation of shape can be natural or man-made, regular or irregular, flat that is two-dimensional or solid that is three-dimensional, representational or abstract, geometric or organic, transparent or opaque, positive or negative, decorative or symbolic, colored, patterned or textured. The perspective of shapes. The shape of drawing a shape is called the perspective of shapes. Perspectives of shapes refer to the angles and curves appearing and disappearing depending on our viewpoint. Perspective drawing refers to the technique one uses to describe this change. The behavior of shapes. The behavior of shapes refers to using shapes to controlling your feelings in the composition of an artwork. Let's discuss some shapes and their associated emotions. Squares and rectangles. Squares and rectangles can portray strength and stability in the beholder. Circles and ellipses. Circles and ellipses can represent continuous movement in the beholder. Triangles. Triangles can lead the eye in an upward movement in the beholder. Inverted triangles. Inverted triangles can create a sense of imbalance and tension in the beholder. Tone. Tone refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. The light, mid-tones and darks throughout the composition reflects the tone of an image. Adjusting the tonal values of an artwork results in the altering of its expressive character. What are the different purposes of tone? The different purposes of using tone include the creation of a contrast between light and dark, the creation of an illusion of form, the creation of a dramatic or tranquil atmosphere, the creation of a sense of depth and distance, and last but not the least, the creation of a rhythm or pattern within a composition. Texture. Texture refers to the surface qualities that have the ability to translate into tactile illusions. The quality of an artwork depends on its texture. In simpler terms, texture refers to the roughness or smoothness of the material used for making the art. The experience of texture is done in two ways, optically and physically. The optical experience of texture is done through sight. The physical experience of texture is done through touch. Now let us discuss in detail what optical and physical texture is. Optical texture. Optical texture is the using of texture by an artist as a painting technique for the creation of illusion of texture. For example, in the detail from traditional paintings, one can find lifelike presence on painted butterflies and drops of fog. These lifelike real appearance is called verisimilitude. Physical texture. Physical texture is how an artist paints with expressive brush strokes in which the texture of the painting conveys the physical and emotional energy of both the artist and the subject. 
natural products like grain or wood, the grittiness of sand, the flaking of rust, the coarseness of cloth and the smear of paint are used for providing this kind of physical texture. Ephemeral texture. Ephemeral texture is a type of texture that belongs to the third category of textures. In these kind of textures, the fleeting forms of elements drawn are subject to change like clouds, smoke, flames, bubbles and liquids. Color. Color refers to the hues with their various values and intensities. Scholars are of opinion that color is the visual element that can have a stronger effective engagement with the senses of the beholder. The creation of a mood of atmosphere is done with the help of color. According to Art Factory, the approaches to light include Color as tone, color as pattern, color as form, color as light, color as symbol, color as movement, color as harmony, color as mood, color as contrast. Direction. Direction refers to the visual roots. These directions can be vertical, horizontal or diagonal paths. In a design, image or graphics, the elements featured can literally follow the directions. Size. Size is the relative dimensions and proportions of images or shapes to one another. It is a common understanding that the larger the visual elements, higher the visual weight will be. Small elements have lesser visual weights. The factors that influence the size are figure ground. Figure ground is the usage of visual weights to separate the two elements in a picture by giving the figure more weight than the background. Proximity. Proximity is the space between elements. This leads to different amounts of local white space resulting in different densities of the objects within the space. Similarity and contrast. Similarity and contrast is used in the visual way to signal either. A greater visual length is given by contrast while dealing with contrasting element. Focal point. Focal point is the points of attraction in a composition. It is defined as the point at which rays or waves meet after reflection or Refraction. It is also the point from which diverging rays or waves appear to proceed. Past experience. Past experience is the viewer's experience in the quantity of intrinsic elements can be hold on. Form. Form is defined as the physical volume of a shape and the space this shape requires for occupying. It can be representational or abstract. The concept of form is generally referred to sculpture. 3D design and architecture, but may also relate to the illusion of 3D on a 2D surface. An expression of depth in an artwork, foreground, middle ground, background is also reflected through form. 3D form, the making of a 3D form or three-dimensional forms can be done in three ways. They are modeled, added form, cast and constructed metal, plastics, raisins, Glass and mixed media are used for the construction of three-dimensional form. The recent innovation in 3D form also uses kinetic involving light and movement generated by natural, mechanical and electronic means. The recent innovation to 3D can be called as CAD, CAD, Computer Aided Design. 2D form, 2D or two-dimensional form can be construct an illusion of 3D in the 2D media. It is done with the help of skillful transformation and manipulation of the visual elements. Examples of 2D program include perspective drawing, 3D computer graphics programs and holograms. Rules of composition. There are some rules on composition that are considered as the standard while making composition. Let's discuss them in detail. Rule of thirds states that an image divided into nine equal segments by two vertical and two horizontal lines must hold the most important scenes of an image. Balancing elements. Placing the central subject of an image away from the center is the primary aim of this rule. Even without the visual weight of the central subject, this can be achieved. Leading lines. The natural lines that follow the way we look at the photographs. Different types of leading lines are diagonal, curvy, zigzag and radial. Symmetry and pattern. While clicking a photograph or designing one, it can be made more attractive and appealing by maintaining the symmetry of the image. Viewpoint. The viewpoint of a photograph has a massive impact on its appearance and meaning. Never always go for eye level image. Giving various angles using drones can all give different meanings to the viewpoint. Purpose of composition. The basic purpose of composition includes number one for the effective communication, 
Second, for maintaining the harmony and balance in communication. Third, for ensuring the aesthetics, beauty, interest and pleasing of communication. It is through composition that the plan, placement or arrangements of components in an artwork is ensured, especially in the case of painting, graphic design and photography and sculpture. The earliest form and maintenance of composition was done by artists who dealt with painting. It is a good composition that aesthetically pleases the eyes of the beholder. For ensuring a good composition, the selection and placement of elements are done with utmost care. Measures to ensure a good composition in design. The non-blank canvas. What is a non-blank canvas? Any art form like a painting starts with a non-blank canvas. The other visual arts, painting, drawing, graphic, design and sculpture, the performing arts, dance, acting, music in the written arts, prose and poetry, all allow artists to start more or less with a blank slate or canvas. Interestingly, in designing a canvas already exists. The onus on framing and eliminating the unnecessary elements while designing anything is upon the photographer or the designer. The only time you can start with the blank canvas while designing is only when the client demands for new design in an entirely new environment. Canvas in any other case is already ready in front of you. The addition, deletion to canvases is done by the designer herself. Positioning. Positioning is one major aspect to check while dealing with composition. How is it possible to check the positioning and to understand you have done the positioning in the right way itself? In what ways can the change of position of something already in front of you be done? The chance to move whatever available in the screen is not always available. The only options left for a designer to ensure positioning in such circumstances are only by moving changing the composition. This change of composition is done by framing or adjusting the position of the gear or by changing the position by yourself. A zoom lens can be of help in these situations. It can help you by adjusting the zoom positions, either the isolation of a portion of a scene or the zooming out of the scenes can be done by using a zoom lens. A fixed focal length lens can also help you for doing the positioning. But the major disadvantage of using a fixed focal length lens is that you will always have to change your position by yourself while doing the same. A reconfiguration of the image is done in these ways. Natural abilities. How can one develop the ability to do the composition? People are of the opinion that in most of the instances, compositional ability is natural. It is more similar like athletic ability. Similar to the sports ability, a training from the part of the designer can actually enable him or her to be good at composition. The improvement of skills can be done with the help of experience, training and skills. Just like few athletes entering to the top of the game, at the beginning of their career, you need not be worried about your immediate skills. You must believe in yourself that this skill of yours can be developed through constant attempts. Just like in other art disciplines, this debate can be considered as yet another nurture versus nature attempt. An eye for composition is innate and natural at the same time. This eye can be developed through constant effort. Ensuring this eye can be done by checking whether this image you clicked or designed is as same as that are have mentally planned. If you are successful to convey the mental image that you have clicked or designed is same as that on the screen after designing or clicking, you can understand that you have a natural eye for composition. Studying the art of composition professionally will be an advantage to you because any skill that is availed natural is in need of polishing. A journey and quest towards making better images can be done with the help of nurturing and exercising the skill. This never intends that lacking a natural eye for composition can lag you behind or make you worthless when you deal with visuals. Even if you are unable to make a mental image before clicking or designing, there are chances that your image can turn out to be excellent. It is said that loving an art from your heart and those you create will be and framing would not bother you with regard to that. Forcing a photograph. Is it always desirable to study an art or a skill forcefully? Studying something forcefully without an interest by the person himself or herself can have adverse effects. This effect is applicable to your mental, physical well-being in itself. A total reverse effect can be made if something is forced upon an individual. 
This is just like how things are forced upon individuals in the name of schooling, education, physical activities, mental activities and so on. The skill of doing a composition can happen at times without even thinking about it. Being overconscious of composition can end up in having a bad image. At times not even having mental images can actually help in building or making a good image. Your worst enemy could be your thought on composition, how to get it, where to find it and so on. At times a person who is not a pro at any of the above mentioned factors can actually end up by being the owner of a good composition. The key for successful composition is already there in your brain and your eye will get the knack of it for sure. The task of the photographer is to get the image in the camera rightly. One should restrain from doing the over analysis of an image if you are looking through the viewfinder of the camera. There will be a battle between your mind and your eye. You should not succumb to the pressure of your brain and concentrate only on your eyes without prejudices and pre-knowledge about how to make a composition. You should not be greedy as artist eon creating images. There will be many circumstances where you will be unable to click the photograph. It should not let you down or take up your heart. You should be patient to find further opportunities. It is not that every visual is left for you to photograph. Relationship between composition and meaning. At times a composition can be incomprehensible. It can also become difficult for you to explain composition in words. At times you are able to find composition but you will not be able to translate it into images. Along with that there will be times where you can find composition in image, brain and reality. The creation of a composition should be spontaneous. A designer or a photographer should never hunt for it. At the same time, you should never be in a position of explaining the composition to anyone. The audience themselves must be given the exclusivity to determine the meaning of your image. Focus on the subject. A composition should never distract an image and its subject. The primary aim of the composition should be to identify, emphasize, complement, isolate or highlight the subject and never distracting and deviating from it. If anything other than the subject is distracting, the audience of your image, it means that you have distracted your audience. It must be certainly taken care of, especially while designing. Using certain colors, shades, particular emblems and icons must be avoided. The designer must also be ethical while dealing with composition and should avoid using designs that can have a connoted meaning in a specific cultures and context. The basic purpose of the photograph should not be deviated while using compositions in designing. The eye's journey. It is the eye of the viewer that will make its way through the frame of the photograph. The path for this journey need not be predictable. The arrangement of objects in the photograph, the framing of the photograph are all guides for serving the eye's journey. This journey will allow the user to use the composition. Elemental concerns. The elemental concerns of compositions as mentioned earlier are patterns, texture, symmetry, asymmetry, depth of field, lines, curves, frames, contrast, color, viewpoint, depth, negative space, field space, foreground, background, visual tension, shapes. A person who is doing the composition should not be like in a quest to deliberately include the following aspects. These aspects should come in a photograph naturally. The composition maker should not be in agreed to include all the factors together in one single frame as well. Things will fall accordingly depending on how you picture an image and how your audiences are receiving it. Before using them, the composition maker must study, identify, recognize and employ them in a judicious manner. Scale taper. Scale tipper means breaking and making an image according to the composition. You can either be a scale tipper or not, but being a scale tipper should not be done at the cost of ripping the aesthetic beauty of an image. Rules to follow. Following a rule while doing the composition must be up to the image maker. The image maker should not try to deliberately include all rules in a stretch while doing a composition. Indeed, there exist the rules of composition. But one should make sure that these rules can be made and broken depending upon the kind of photographer you are. It is not that in composition no rule can be amended. There are photographs from around the world that has left an eyes mark for being the rule breakers. The key of success while doing a composition 
is an understanding not to distract the audience of your image and complementing composition in relation with your image. Conclusion Hope you all had a good understanding of composition. This module introduced you with the basics of composition, providing a theoretical and practical understanding. The rules of composition, styles of composition were discussed as well. Hope this module will help you in doing the art of composition next time you do designing and graphics. Till then, it's a goodbye.